Kozuhiko Yamamoto. An alternative analysis of Japanese wabisha in terms of the ethical structure of the kanon. Introduction. As drinking tea, CHA, seems to be one of the most common custom all over the world, the question of why the tea ceremony, chinoyu, in Japan, in particular wabisha, is going to be discussed here may be raised. Chinoyu, which Okakura Kakuzo, 1862-1913, referred to as teaism in the Book of Tea, is not just about making and drinking tea at a social gathering, but rather it is, a cult founded on the adoration of the beautiful among the sordid facts of everyday existence. It inculcates purity and harmony, the mystery of mutual charity, the romanticism of the social order, it expresses conjointly with ethics and religion our whole point of view about man and nature. It shows comfort in simplicity rather than in the complex and costly. It is moral geometry, inasmuch as it defines our sense of proportion to the universe. Okakura 1956, 3 to 17. When Okakura refers to Chinoyu as teaism, he bears Wabisha in mind. Okakura 1956, 53 to 73, as established by Sen Rikyu, 1522 to 1591 in the 16th century and being performed in Japan even in the 21st century. As Chinoyu, Wabisha, may be associated with ethics, religion, morality and the Japanese sense of proportion to the universe, it is worth clarifying what kind of associations are made between Chinoyu and these. In regards to the religious aspects of Chinoyu, it has been indicated that Mota Juko, 1423-1502, who studied Buddhism, introduced its concepts into Chinoyu for the first time in the 15th century, saying, tea is in all pure, and takes joy in meditation and delight in the Dharma, Sen 1989, 233-242. The line of the association of Chinoyu with Sen Buddhism was kept by Taki no Jōo, 1502-1555, and Wabisha was firmly established by Rikyu in collaboration with Taki no Jōo, from whom Rikyu learned Chinoyu, Sen 1998, 158-176, Nanbaroku 3-5. In regards to the ethical and moral aspects of Chinoyu, it has been discussed that Taki no Jōo sent a letter to Rikyu, saying that Wabi, the essence of Wabisha, consisted of honesty and the quality of being deeply discreet without displaying pride, Sen 1989, 233-242. It was surmised that Rikyu had the feeling that Wabi was a force that springs forth naturally, true spirit that searches out truth, Sen 1989, 233-242. Thus, Wabisha is deemed to be associated with Zen. Buddhism and such moralistic attitudes as honesty, discreteness, and naturalism. Previously, in an attempt to clarify the ethical value system of a society without state power, which enables people within a society to acquire order and peace, I explored the ethical concepts of the Albanian customary law, the Kanun, which is considered to be the apparatus for solving conflicts and preserving order and peace in the northern highlands of Albania, and found that the Kanun had ethics and logic of its own, which have spontaneously developed on the basis of pagan religions. Consisting of six concepts, oath, honor, guest, blood, food, and revenge, Yamamoto 2008, 230-259. It was found that the concepts of guest, blood, and food might constitute the basis of the ethical structure of the kanun, representing primordial events in human history which evoke symbolic thoughts with religious acumen in humans. The crucial experiences of humans such as hunger, disease, wounds, bleeding, death, the violent power of nature etc., which threaten their very existence, are deemed to have engendered the ethical, religious concepts of, guest, blood, and, food, in humans, as apparently, guest, is related to the experiences of death due to the violence of other people, blood, to the experiences of death due to wounds and bleeding, and, food, to the experiences of hunger and death due to starvation, Yamamoto. 2008. 230-259. Wabisha is not just about guests drinking tea served by a host in accordance with the orderly procedures referred to as temi in a host's small chishitsu, tea room, of Son, thatched hut, with roji, garden approach to Son, but also the host serving guests light meals such as rice, vegetables, and a dish of fish or a bird there, 
Plachau 2003, 11-14. When the ritualistic procedure of a guest and host sharing tea and meals in the small tea room is seen to have been performed for hundreds of years, we cannot stop pondering about if it may be possible to find an alternative meaning and significance of Wabisha by analyzing it with the insight of the religious and intimate relationship between a host and guest being established in hospitality, as exemplified in the ethical structure of the Kanan. To our knowledge, there have been few studies on the ethical aspects of Wabisha analyzed from this viewpoint. In an attempt to clarify the alternative meanings and ethical aspects of Wabisha, I examined the logic of Wabisha by exploring its history, aesthetics and what tea masters such as Marotta Juko, Takino Joo and Sen Riku did and said, while bearing the ethical structure of the Kanan in mind. Wabisha in Japan Wabisha observed by a Jesuit in the 16th century. Joao Rodriguez, circa 1561-1633, was born around 1561 in northern Portugal and came to Japan in 1577 for unknown reasons when he was a boy. He entered the Society of Jesus in 1580 and received ordination in Macau in 1596. He left Japan forever in 1610 when he was expelled from Nagasaki on account of his influence on trade and administration of Nagasaki. He, who spoke Japanese fluently, acted as an interpreter for Toyotomi Hideyoshi, 1537-1598, and Tokugawa Ieyasu, 1543-1616, when the Jesuits visited the supreme leaders of Japan to pay homage, Rodriguez 1973-11-24. He seems to have experienced Chinoyu himself as an invited guest while in Japan, and therefore became a first-hand eyewitness of Wabisha being performed in 16th century Japan. While he was in Macau, he wrote Historia Dea Egregia du Japão, in which he describes, in detail, how Wabisha was being performed in 16th century Japan. Sonen Roji Among the social customs of this kingdom, that of meeting to drink CHA is the chief and most esteemed among the Japanese and is the one in which they most show their excellence. So they spare no pains in the construction of the place where they give CHA to their guests, this is a special building, with a path or entrance leading to it and with various other things suitable to the purpose of this custom. In general this purpose is the quiet and restful contemplation of the things of nature in the wilderness and desert. Hence all the material of this place is entirely adapted for this purpose and for eremitical solitude in the form of rude huts made quite naturally with rough wood and bark from the forest, as if they had been formed by nature or in the usual style of those people who dwell in woods or the wilderness, Rodriguez 1973, 105. The entrance gate is a very small, narrow, and low door, through which a person can enter by bending down. Inside this entrance or door there are wooden seats like benches at the sides, where the invited guests sit down and wait while everything is being prepared within, Rodriguez 1973, 106. A long narrow path runs through the middle of this wood, and it is paved with stepping stones over which the guest passes, the path leads to the house or hut where the guest is received. But before reaching there, he comes to a rough rock erected halfway along the path to one side, this has a pool of clean water in the middle and a container at its base, so that he may draw water and wash his hands, Rodriguez 1973, 107. The CHA house is usually very small of three or four mats, sometimes of only one and a half, according to the preference of each person. Below the above-mentioned cupboard there is a small door in the corner of the hut where they enter inside, it is of a height and breadth which will fit a person who is seated or squatting. Light enters the little house through windows in various places, these are also rough and of woven reeds. The exterior of the house is completely and skillfully thatched, while the roof or ceiling inside is also made of straw or coarse woven reeds like a mat, and is smoke-dried to show its age and lonely poverty. In the place of honor there is a kind of recess let into the wall with a step at the bottom, here they hang an ancient picture or an old maxim written in ancient letters by an admired writer, or place a flower in a vase, so that it may be contemplated by the guest as he enters, Rodriguez 1973, 107. Chaji, Tea Get-Togethers 
as the entertainment with CHA in the Suki house and all its ceremonies are special and different in form from ordinary way, the Lord of Tenka and Lords, as well as all kinds of nobles and wealthy persons with the necessary means, make great account of it in Japan. Those who do not have the wherewithal to do so much perform it with the wabizuki as best they can, from October onwards the Japanese send for their caddies of CHA. These have been stored on the high cool mountains so that the CHA may pass the hottest summer days there and thus retain its strength and bright green color. They open the mouth of the caddy for the first time with great celebrations, and they call this kuchigiri, that is, to cut or open the mouth of the CHA caddy because the CHA house is small and there is no room for many people to assemble together therein, they invite only one, two, even three, and at most four persons. They send them a brief and polite letter saying that they wish to entertain them with CHA. At the appointed hour on the day each guest robes himself neatly and becomingly, wearing new stockings, they proceed to the private gate and entrance to the woods, outside in front of this gate there is a swept terrace which, together with the walls, has been recently sprinkled with water for the sake of freshness. In front of the gate there is a rough clean stone where the guest changes his sandals before entering the wood, so as not to soil the stones of the path, for they are sprinkled with water and are very clean. Rodriguez 1973, 287-291. Up to this point the gate has been locked from within, but now the master of the house comes, opens it and thrusting only his head outside bids the guests welcome. He closes the gate without locking it and then retires inside his house by another special path through the wood reserved for his use, once he has withdrawn, the guests open the gate, enter and then lock it again from the inside. They sit there in an arbor for a short while, relaxing and gazing at the wood. Then as they walk along the path through the wood up to the CHA house, there is crystal clear water there which they take with a vessel and pour onto their hands, they now approach the closed door of the small house, this is set somewhat above the ground and is just large enough for a person to pass through provided he stoops. They remove their fans and daggers from their sashes and deposit them in a kind of cupboard placed there outside for that purpose. Then they open the door and leaving their sandals here they all go inside. Each guest first of all goes by himself to the toko in the middle inn. Order to look at the flowers that are placed there in an old copper or earthenware vase or in an old basket of a special shape. After that he looks at the hanging panel of painting or letters, and considers this or the meaning of the writing. Then he goes to see the stove, the kettle, and the arrangement of the burning charcoal and the certain kind of fine ash, so neatly and tastefully laid out that it leaves nothing to be desired. When everybody has finished his inspection and has squatted on his knees, the host opens an inner door, enters the little house and thanks his guests for having come to his retreat, while they return him thanks for having invited them. The host rises and fetches the charcoal and the ash in special containers along with a suitable copper spoon. He takes the kettle from the stove, places it to one side and begins to put on more charcoal. All draw near to watch him put on the charcoal for it is done in a special way. He next replaces the kettle and again pours water into it, and puts it on the fire so that it may come to the boil. A small quantity of delicate perfume prepared for the purpose is placed in the ash, and although it does not burn, the heat of the fire makes it give off a pleasant smell in the house, he goes inside and with his own hands brings out the tables and beginning with the senior guest, he puts one in front of each person. The table is most neatly arranged and set out with rice and vegetable shiru and two wholesome dishes, the host then retires inside, closes the door and leaves the guests to eat. From time to time, the host comes out to see if they want any more shiru, and he goes and fetches it for them. Then in due course he brings out a glazed jug with a spout containing hot wine, and also cups for each one. He places it in front of the guests for each one to take and drink what he will and does not press them to drink more, he takes the tables one by one inside and then brings out a small quantity of some suitable fruit as dessert on a separate plate for each guest, and then retires inside. When they have eaten the fruit, the guests collect the salvers and place them aside near the service door, then they leave the house, close the door and go into the wood to wash their hands and mouths in preparation for drinking CHA. As soon as they have gone out, the host locks the door from inside, sweeps the little house with his own hands, 
changes the flowers and puts in fresh ones of another kind. When all is ready he opens the door slightly and retires, thus giving the guests to understand that they may enter. After they have washed their hands and mouths, the guests enter the house again and once more, just as before, they inspect everything placed there. The host now appears and asks if they wish to drink CHA, he comes out with the necessary vessels, and should he own a small valuable caddy he brings the ground CHA inside it, enclosed within a silken bag. Then in their presence he takes off the bag and puts down the small caddy, and washes and cleans the cups. He then puts the CHA into the cup with a cane spoon, so he puts in as much CHA as is needed, and with a suitable jug he draws off hot water from the kettle and while it is still very hot he pours it on top of the powder. He next stirs it with a small cane brush and places the cup on the mat in front of the guests, the senior guest begins first and takes three sips before handing it to the second guest, and thus the CHA goes round until they have finished drinking, Rodriguez 1973, 287-291. When everything is finished, he, the guest, goes back and leaves by the first gate near the entrance to the wood, and there he awaits the host outside. The latter puts his head out of the gate and they thank each other for the CHA and the visit. They later exchange compliments either personally or in writing, Rodriguez 1973, 109. Wabisha in the late 20th century. While there are many styles of chaji in Wabisha, a chaji which is held at around noon, Shogo no chaji, is regarded to be the most formal among the different styles of chaji. As an example of the Shogo Nakaji, a chaji held at Urite in 1991 is recounted here. Shogo no chaji. So, Urite with a chishitsu of two and a half tatami mats, a mat with a straw base covered with rush, and a pond in Roji, in which colored carps were reveling, in Ono Jayoshi, Fukuoka Prefecture, date, 9th of June in 1991, Teishu, host Sochiko, guests, a shokyaku, principal guest, Kumo no Oba, and two show bands, accompanying guests, Hanto, assistant of the Teishu Keiko. The Teishu sent a letter asking the guests if they would please accept the invitation to the Chaji at around noon, on the 9th of June, 1991. The guests were willing to take part in it on the date and time designated. They arrived at the Yuritsuki, waiting room, of Yurite 20 minutes before 11 o'clock on that date. There, they greeted each other and talked for some time. After a while, the Hanto appeared and asked them to walk through the Roji to the Koshikake Machiai, waiting arbor with bench in the Roji, wearing Rojizorai, sandals. They passed through the roji, walking on stepping stones to the kosher cake machiai. When they reached the kosher cake machiai, they took their places, waiting for a short time. The Teishu, who appeared with a mizuok, water bucket, with water and hishaku, ladle, scooped the water from the tsukubai, water basin, with the hishaku, scattering water on the roji. She washed hands and rinsed mouth with the water from the tsukubai, pouring water from the Mizuok into the Tsukubai. Then, she went to the Chumon, middle gate, and opened it. The guests and the Teishu greeted each other there with a bow, uttering nothing. The Teishu returned to the Sone and entered the Chishitsu through the Nijiriguchi, small crawl-in entrance, leaving its door partially open. The guests entered the Chumon, with the Shokyaku being the first to enter. The last guest to enter the Chumon locked it. After washing hands and rinsing mouth, the Shokyaku entered the Chishitsu through the Nijiriguchi, followed by the Shobans. The last guest to enter shut the door of the Nijiriguchi with a small bang. When the Shokyaku entered the Chishitsu, she approached the Toko, alcove, in order to view the Kakimono, hanging scroll, appreciating the meaning of the calligraphy on it, followed by the Shobans. When all the guests finished viewing the Kakimono in the Toko and the Kama, kettle, in the furo, brazier, the Teishu appeared, and she and the guests greeted each other. The Teishu thanked everyone for their visiting the Son, and the guests thanked her for inviting them to Chaji. The Teishu returned to the Mizuya, preparation room, and brought in kaisaki, light meal, of one soup and three side dishes put on zen, tray, to the guests, beginning with the shokyaku. Then, the Teishu returned to the Mizuya, 
leaving the guests to eat the kaiseki. The Taishu sometimes appeared and asked the guests if they needed more of the kaiseki. While the guests ate the kaiseki, the Taishu brought in a sakazuki, sake cup, and carnape, small pot with a lid and spout containing sake. The Taishu and guests exchanged the sakazuki in order to share sake. The Taishu and guests exchanged the sakazuki in order to share sake. When the guests finished eating the kaiseki, they returned all the bowels and dishes to their original positions on the zen, dropping the chopsticks on the zen with a clack sound. The Taishu entered the chishitsu, collecting the zens. Then, the Taishu replenished the charcoal, shizumi, in the furo according to the shozumidimi, the procedure for the first charcoal laying, adding koboku, aromatic wood, to give off the smell of incense. The Shokyaku asked the Taishu if they could view the Kogo, lidded container for incense. When the guests finished viewing the Kogo, the Taishu brought in omogashi, main sweets, asking the guests to have nakadachi, leaving the tea room temporarily, as she wanted to make the chishitsu clean. After eating the omogashi, the guests went out of the chishitsu through the nijuriguchi, with the Shokyaku going out of first. The Taishu, who swept the chishitsu in order to make it clean, replaced the kakemono in the toko with flowers. During the nakadachi, the teishu prepared a mizusashi, water jar, and chair, small ceramic caddy to hold the powdered tea, for serving koicha, thick tea, in the chushitsu. When the preparation was finished, the teishu struck a gong in order to let the guests to know it time for them to enter the chushitsu through the nijiriguchi. The guests, who were appreciating nature and the beauty of the roji during nakadachi, washed their hands and rinsed their mouths with water from the tsukubai, and entered the chishitsu, with the shokyaku entering first. The guests appreciated the beauty of the flowers arranged in the toko, and viewed the karma and the mizusashi. While the guests were viewing them, the hanto removed the sudare, bamboo, screens, so that the chishitsu of the goza, the latter half of chaji, would be brighter than the chishitsu of the shosa, the first half of chaji. Then, the Taishu prepared koicha for the guests in their presence, according to the koicha demi, the procedures for making thick tea. When the shokyaku took three and a half sips of the koicha in all from the chorn, tea bowl, she passed it on to the shobans, all the guests sharing the koicha from a single chorn. When all the guests finished sipping the koicha, the shokyaku said that she wanted to view the chorn. The last guest to sip the koicha put the chorn in front of the shokyaku. After the guests have relished the beauty of the chorn, the shokyaku asked the teishu if they could view the chair, jishaku, tea scoop, and shifuku, cloth pouch for chair. When the guests finished viewing them, the teishu replenished the charcoal, gozumi, in the furo, according to the gozumidimi, the procedure for the latter charcoal laying, adding the koboku to give off the smell of incense. After the guests enjoyed viewing the gozumi, the teishu served the guests higoshi, dry sweets, and made you suture in their presence, according to the Yuzu Academy, the procedures for making thin tea. The Yusucha was served in an individual chorin for each guest, in contrast to the koicha which was shared by all the guests from a single chorin, with the shokyaku being served first. After the guests ate higoshi, they drank the Yusucha. While relishing the Yusucha, the guests viewed the chorin. Then, the shokyaku asked the teishu if they could view the natsum, container for the powdered tea for yusucha and chishako. The guests relished these utensils by inspecting them. This was the end of the chaji. The teishu thanked the guests for their taking part in the chaji and the guests thanked the teishu for her hospitality. The teishu went out of the chishitsu. The shokyaku, who viewed the toko and the karma once more, went out of the chishitsu through the nijiriguchi, followed by the shobans. The last guest to go out of shut the door of the Nijiriguchi with a small bang. Upon hearing the bang, the Teishu entered the Chishitsu and saw them off from the open Nijiriguchi. A brief history of CHA in Japan before Rikyu. It has been well known that Sen Rikyu established Wabisha in the late 16th century, which had began its founding by Mota Juko in the latter half of the 15th century, and was further developed by Takino Joo in the first half of the 16th century. Sen and Sen 2011, 84-131.
Nothing about CHA was described in Kojiki, Nihongi, and Manyashu, Kojiki XL, Xulvai, which were published in the 8th century and among the oldest documents of recorded mythology, the history and poems of ancient Japanese. It was believed that though CHA had grown in Japan since time immemorial, Japanese did not know how to use the leaves to make CHA, EISAI 2000, 12-22. In a document from the 15th century, it was written that CHA was served in the ceremony called Incha in 729-2. The Buddhist priests, who read the Great Hanya Sutra at the court of the emperor, Sen 1998, 47-56. It is believed that the CHA leaves used in this period were the dancha, brick-like, pressed tea, supposedly imported from China, Sen and Sen 2011, 84 to 131. In Nihan Koki, it was written that when the Emperor Saga visited a Buddhist temple in 815, a priest named Aishu served CHA to him, Nihan Koki 132. The emperors, aristocrats and Buddhist priests seem to have enjoyed CHA in the 9th century, Kaifuso, Ryunshu, Bunkashurishu, Keikokushu, Honkareso 53-54, 78, 91, 93, 129, 174, Sen 1998, 47-56. In 894, official contact between Japan and China was cut as Japan ceased to send students and scholars to China for studying its culture, institution, and religion due to the worsening political situation there. After official communication between Japan and China was cut, the custom of drinking CHA seems to have been in decline until Izai, 1141-1215, brought seeds of the CHA plant from China in 1191, Sen and Sen 2011, 84-131. Izai was the priest that introduced the Zen Buddhism, called Rinzai, from China to Japan for the first time. He appreciated the medical effects of CHA such as the strengthening of the heart and the reduction of sleepiness more than any other benefits, EISAI 2000, 12-22. Izai CHA was accepted by Minamoto Sanatomo, 1192-1219, of the Kamakura Shogunate on account of its medical values, along with his Zen Buddhism, Azima Kagami 4, 109-110. Izai CHA was not the dancha, but the matcha powdered tea, which has been used in Chaji since then until now. As Zen Buddhism became accepted among the warrior class in the Kamakura period, 1192-1333, CHA became popular among the warrior class and Zen priests because of its medical as well as stimulating effects. Then, tea tasting contests called Toka, in which competitors distinguished Honcha, tea produced in Toganu, later in Uji, from Hisha, tea produced elsewhere became a fad among the warrior class and the general populace from the end of the Kamakura period until the middle of the Muromachi period, 1333-1568, Taiheiki 3 252-253, Taiheiki 3. 442-448, Murai 1989, 3-32, Sen and Sen 2011, 84-131. In the end, Toka came to be known as a basara, tea affairs of excess or extravagance, as it was performed in luxurious rooms with extravagant decorations and the wages increased enormously. Taiheiki 3 252-253, Murai 1989, 3-32. During the early Muromachi period, the architectural structure called a kaisho, meeting place, was built in the shogun's palace and at the residences of powerful warrior chieftains where gatherings for waka, 31-syllable poem, and renga, linked verse, chinoyu, and other activities were held, Murai 1989, 3-32. As these gatherings became more frequent, the number of kaisho increased. The kaisho began to develop, adding toko and shoin, study, architecture, where the shoin chinoyu was to be held. As no hearth was built in a shoin, the daisu, portable shelf unit, brought in from China, began to be used for preparing CHA in the Shoin Chinoyu in the 15th century, Sen 1998, 119-145. In the Shoin Chinoyu using a Daisu in those days, it was not rare for karamono, treasured articles imported from China, such as paintings, furnishings, 
calligraphies, and tea utensils to be ostentatiously displayed, Sen 1998, 119 to 145, Uri 1989, 3 to 32. In contrast to the extravagance of Toka and being boastful about Karamono in the Shoinchinoyu, in the latter half of the 15th century, a Buddhist priest, Murata Juko, who was fond of Chinoyu, was deemed to have introduced the values of Buddhism and the aesthetic value of being cold and withered into Chinoyu, Murai 1989, 3-32, Sen 1998, 119-145, and therefore, changing the direction of Chinoyu from extravagance and ostentation to unpretentiousness, modesty, humility and plainness. When Ashikaga Yoshimasa, 1436-1490, the eighth shogun of the Muromachi shogunate, asked his doboshu, private aid and cultural consultant, named Noemi if there was something interesting, because he was tired of the amusements he had enjoyed up to that point in time, Noemi answered, saying, a Buddhist priest named Juko has performed Chinoyu for thirty years in Nora, the essence of which may be related to Buddhism. Yoshimasa, deeply impressed by what Noami said, invited Murata Juko to be his instructor of Chinoyu, Yamanu Sojiki 9-16. Murata Juko was believed to have developed a kind of shoin called a zashiki, sitting room, of four and a half tatami mats, where a daisu was used for preparing CHA with toko where calligraphy, paintings, and flowers were shown, Nambaroku 52-53. Ashikaga Yoshimasa, who abdicated in 1473, leaving the shogunate to his son, retired to the Higoshiyama section of Kyoto. There, he built the Temple of Silver Pavilion, where the Buddhist hall called Tagudo was added. Tagudo had a small shrine of four and a half tatami mats named Dojinsai, Murai 1989, 3-32. Since Ashikaga Yoshimasa, the leader of the country was absorbed in performing Chinoyu, feudal lords, daimyo, and rich merchants in Kyoto, Nora and Sokai, following him, started to learn and perform Chinoyu earnestly. In those days, it was said that people who did not perform Chinoyu were not human, Yamanu Sojiki 9-16. While Ashikaga Yoshimasa was fond of collecting Karamono and Meibutsu, distinguished objects, Yamanu Sojiki 9-16, Murata Juko admonished his disciples in a letter sent to one of them, saying that there were two evils in Chinoyu, that is, arrogance and selfishness. He seems to have advocated for the aesthetic value of being cold, high, and withered, care, in Chinoyu, which was supposed to be attained by wholeheartedly discerning a savour of utensils of high quality, which might have a lasting, numbing effect on mind, Chardo Koten Zenshu 33-24. Murata Juko was also known to have said that it was better to have an excellent steed in a straw-thatched hut, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121 suggesting that he did not deny the aesthetic value of Karamoto and Meibutsu, but tried to reach a higher ground of Chinoyu by amalgamating excellence with the aesthetic value of being cold and withered. The war called Onin War, which broke out in 1467, lasted until 1477 and devastated Kyoto. After Ashikaga Yoshimasa died in 1490, the Muromachi shogunate was so weakened that powerful feudal lords began to fight among them resulting in the Age of Wars, Warring States period, which lasted from the early 1490s until 1568. During the Warring States period, the Karamono and Meibutsu which Muromachi shogunate accumulated were dispersed, and people of lower social class vied to obtain them. The Chinoyu was becoming prosperous even though the nation was in a desperate situation from the Warring States period, Yamanu Sojiki 9-16. Takino Joo was from Sokai, which was a prosperous, semi-autonomous city governed by the merchants through an Igoshu, city elders, council in the 16th century. Renga was popular in Sokai in those days. He was believed to have been a Rengashi, Renga poet, until the age of 30, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121. Takino Joo learned Chinoyu from Moata Juko's two disciples named Soching and Sogo, Nambaroku 3-17. It was said that when he learned Ega Taigai written by Fujiwara Taker, 1162-1241, he achieved such a profound understanding of Chinoyu that he became a Maijin, tea master, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121. The master of Renga, named Shinkei, 
1406-1475, used to say that the essence of Renga was in the aesthetic value of being cold and withered. Takino Joo always said that Chinoyu should be performed while bearing the ultimate value of being cold and withered, in mind, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121. Chinoyu with the display of many karamoto and meibutsu was called a daimyo kanoyu, tea ceremony of feudal lords. A man who had a great ability to discern good utensils with merit concerning chinoyu, and was acting as an instructor, was called a chaniyusha, tea man. A man who had no karamoto or meibutsu, nevertheless, was fond of performing chinoyu with a resolution, utensil he liked, and such merit, was called a wabisuki, tea man of wabi. A man who had karamono and a great ability to discern good utensils with excellent hands and a mind for chinoyu was called a maijin, Yamanu Sojiki 9-16. In the 16th century, there was one saying, which says, once a man achieves a maijin status, he is more and more fascinated with wabisha, finding pleasure even in using a piece of the utensils, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121. While a zashiki of four and a half tatami mats with toko, using daisu, was originally invented by Mota Juko, it was revised by Takino Joo, who referred to the revised zashiki of four and a half tatami mats with a mud wall as kuzano, zashiki, thatched zashiki, nanboroku 52-53. Joo's zashiki was basically one of four and a half tatami mats, which might be used for chinoyu with the display of karamono or meibutsu while he insisted that the zashiki of three tatami mats should be exclusively used for wabisha without the display of karamono or meibutsu. In contrast, Rikyu was said to have had another idea, which maintained that the zashiki of three tatami mats might be used for chinoyu with the display of karamono or meibutsu, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121. When Takino Joo was alive, there was only one zashiki of two and a half tatami mats in Japan, whose owner was his disciple and fond of wabisha. Within ten years of Toyotomi Hideyoshi coming to power in 1582 upon the assassination of Oda Nobunaga, 1534-1582, almost everyone was found to be using the zashiki of three tatami mats or two and a half tatami mats or two tatami mats in Chinoyu, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121. Rikyu's doings and sayings about Wabisha. Sen Rikyu was from Sokai. According to Chawa Shigetsu Shu, as he had an ancestor named Sen Amy, Doboshu, who served the Muromachi shogunate, his family had been entitled to have the honorary name Sen, Yamanu Sojiki 138, 173. When he was young, he was called Yoshiro. Sen Yoshiro started to learn Chinoyu at the age of 17. His instructors of Chinoyu were Takino Joo and Kitamuki Dochin, who learned Chinoyu from a man named Kukai, a disciple of No Amy, Nanboroku 3 to 17, Yamanu Sojiki 138 to 173. Rikyu learned Daisu Chinoyu, Chinoyu using Daisu, and Shoin Chinoyu from Dochin, Nanboroku 3 to 17. It was written in Chawa Shigetsu Shu that Dochin believed that Sen Yoshiro would become an excellent Chanyusha whom nobody could surpass, Yamanu Sojiki 138-173. Rikyu explored how to use the Kozashiki, small sitting room, for four and a half tatami mats in Chinoyu in collaboration with Taki no Joo, Nanboroku 3-17. However, it was he who started to use the Kozashiki of one and a half tatami mats in Chinoyu, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121. It was written in Chawa Shigetsu Shu that when Toyotomi Hideyoshi had assigned Rikyu to perform Daisu Chinoyu, Rikyu visited a man named Suji Gensai, who was supposed to know the Daisu Chinoyu of old days well. Rikyu, who learned Daisu Chinoyu from him, performed it in front of Hideyoshi, who told Rikyu that though he learned it before, the Daisu Chinoyu Rikyu performed was different from one Hideyoshi knows. Rikyu answered, saying that the Daisu Chinoyu of old days used many utensils, which was not good, and so he tried to make it simpler. When Hideyoshi heard what Rikyu said, he said that he had known Rikyu's procedure before, declaring that Chaniyusha should follow Rikyu's Daisu Chinoyu from then on, as it appeared appropriate. 
Hideyoshi was so impressed by Rikyu's performance that the Sen family had followed the Chinoyu Rikyu invented instead of the Chinoyu of old days, Yamanu Sojiki 138-173. According to Chawa Shigetsu Shu, in 1585, Taotomi Hideyoshi asked the imperial government to give the titles of Buddhist official to several Chaniyusha whom he selected. When only Rikyu had declined to accept the title, and asked for the honorific title of Koji, person who has attained the way of enlightenment, his request was accepted by the imperial government. He was allowed to announce himself as Rikyu Koji, Yamanu Sojiki 138-173. In 1586, when Tokugawa Ieyasu, Hideyoshi's political opponent, visited Hideyoshi in order to pay homage to him, Rikyu was assigned by Hideyoshi to perform Chinoyu for Ieyasu, Yamanu Sojiki 174-197. In 1591, Rikyu, who lost the favor of Hideyoshi on account of the statuette modeled after him being placed on the upper floor of the temple gate of Daitokuji, was ordered to be exiled to Sokai, where he was put under house arrest. On 28 February in 1591, Rikyu was forced to commit suicide by Harakiri, which Toyotomi Hideyoshi bid him to do, Yamanu Sojiki 174-197. Hideyoshi seems to have regretted forcing Rikyu to commit suicide, when he was unable to select an appropriate furo for the Chinoyu he planned to have because he could not have Rikyu's advice anymore, Yamanu Sojiki 174-197. People gossiped a lot about the causes and circumstances concerning Rikyu's forced suicide. However, as there seemed little transgressions on his side concerning this, and Toyotomi Hideyoshi continued to favor the utensils Rikyu owned, all people of society continued to admire him and follow his chinoyu, Yamanu Sojiki 174-197. According to Nanboroku, Rikyu used to say that though the basis of chinoyu was one performed with the use of daisu, Daisu Chinoyu, the Chinoyu performed in the Kozashiki of Son, Son Chinoyu, was the best at presenting the true mind of Chinoyu, Nanboroku 3-17. As the Chinoyu was deemed to be tantamount to the training and learning of Buddhism, the house which the rain did not penetrate and the amount of food which thwarted hunger were enough in the Son Chinoyu, in which the host prepared water and firewood, boiled the water and made CHA, which was offered to the guest and to the altar of Buddha. The host drank CHA and arranged flowers, burned incense, all these were equal to following what Buddha did in ancient times, Nambaroku 3-17. Whenever Rikyu performed a Chinoyu in the Son, Roji, he brought Mizuok with water himself. When someone asked him why, Rikyu answered, saying that the host bringing water as the fist procedure of Chinoyu performed in the Son Roji, and the guest washing hands and rinsing mouth as well, were the essence of Chinoyu, Casting aside the dust of daily life, Nambaroku 3 to 17. Rikyu was said to have cited two wakas in an attempt to clarify the essence and mind of Wabisha. One is a waka composed by Fujiwara Taker, saying, When I see the thatched huts by the seaside, there is no blossom or no red leaf of autumn, even though it is at dusk in the autumn. Rikyu thought that this waka represented the Taki no Jo's Wabisha more exactly than his Wabisha likening blossom and red leaf to the splendor of Shoin and Daisu. Another is a waka composed by Fujiwara Ayataka, 1158-1237, saying, I want to show the grass, which is buried under the snow in the mountain village even though it is now in the spring, to the people who want to see only blossoms. Rikyu thought that the grass waiting for the prime time of spring under the snow embodied a life which had the potential to sprout out spontaneously with no energy imbued from outside, likening his wabisha to life under the snow with the potential to sprout, Nanboroku 3-17. According to Nanboroku, Rikyu used to say that the true merit of Chinoyu could be found only in the Chinoyu performed in the Sonroji. Though the Shoin Chinoyu with the use of Daisu should be performed strictly following its procedures, it was the way of this world. The Chinoyu in the Sonroji originated from Shoin Chinoyu with the use of Daisu, however, it left the Shoin Chinoyu, transcending it, enabling us to reach the stage of attaining the nothingness of the mind. It was the way of transcendence, Nanbaroku 210-216. The essence of Wabisha should exemplify a world of purity which Buddha had preached. 
the host and the guest were supposed to be coming together without crooked minds in the chinoyu performed in the sonroji, sweeping off the dust of this world. The wabisha performed in the sonroji would demolish this world, opening the world of the pure land. It would be possible to know that the true meaning of CHA resided here by performing wabisha in the sonroji, which would be the way leading to purity through the ascetic practices of wabi, Nanbaroku 264-278. It was observed that Rikyu was fond of didactic poems. One of them said, Though the Roji is supposed to be a way through which we transcend this world, why do we have dust of this world in our minds? Another said, The guest and host, demolishing the facade of this world in the Sonroji, share CHA with no boundary in their minds, Nanbaroku 318-320. Rikyu also used to chant a waka composed by Jin, 1155 to 1225. A Buddhist priest, which said, I feel sad when I find that the way of Buddha, which I do not want to taint, enables me to go on living in this world, Yamanu Sojiki 89 to 121. Wabisha's Logic According to Rikyu, Wabisha is to be performed in a small, shabby, and thatched hut, to which a small, modest garden is attached. The host, who invites the guest to his hut, first offers a light meal, and then a thick tea, followed by a thin tea. While tea is prepared for the guest by the host in accordance with the general procedures stipulated in the 16th century, the guest drinks tea in accordance with the procedures stipulated around the same time. This process is assumed to be a kind of ritual, performed in a sacred space called the Sonroji. The host and guest will establish an intimate, close relationship through this ritual. The core of this ritual seems to be the host offering food and tea to the guest. In regards to the food, the guest eats it in the tea room, while the host eats it in the room next to the tea room because the host is expected to show a humble attitude. The guest, especially, the principal guest is offered an honorable place in the tea room. The host and the guest speak little in the tea room except for exchanging greetings and uttering words which will help the ritual move forward in the tea room. The act of the host serving food and tea to the guest, and the act of the guest eating food and drinking tea in concert with the host's act, and the fact that they share the time of their precious life in this sacred place will build a sense of oneness between them, bringing them a catharsis which may eradicate the sediments of negative emotions such as resentment, anger, animosity, grief and anxiety amassed in the life of this world, leading to the restoration and renovation of their traumatized minds. This precious time of the performed ritual in this sacred place will pass away shortly, being lost forever. Though the experience of Wabisha, in which the host and the guest share in the tea room on a particular date and time, will never be re-enacted again exactly in the same way, Yamanu Sojiki 89-121, the ritual of Wabisha enables the host and the guest to have a repeated and endless experience, which is similar to that of a particular date and time. The word, Wabisuki was used in the 16th century to indicate a tea man, who had no karamono or meibutsu, though he was fond of chinoyu, Yamanu Sojiki 9-16. Wabi is the Japanese word, which expresses the meanings and nuances of, being languishing, being lonely, being austere, being heartbreaking and, being calm. In this regard, wabisha, which is expected to comply with the implications of the word wabi, is deemed to be the directory, which leads us to discern values in being simple, in being austere, in being serene, in being modest and in being humble. According to Choandaki, wabisuki was expected to serve tea not with the material, but with the mind, not with pomp and extravagance, but with humbleness and modesty, Chado Koten Zenshu 3 355-384. Wabisuki was enjoined to have a pride in this aesthetic value, implying that a tea man is requested to pursue the way of Wabisha for the purpose of polishing and enhancing himself through self-mortification and self-negation, which may enable him to reach the higher status of purity and enlightenment, Yamanu Sojiki 174-197, Chado Koten Zenshu 3355, 384. Discussion The style and form of Wabisha in Japan as performed in the 16th and 20th centuries, its history, and the concept of Wabisha preached by tea masters such as Murata Juko, 
Takino Joo and Senrikyu were explicated here in an attempt to find the logic of Wabisha. It is clear that the style and form of Chinoy observed by the Jesuit in the 16th century is almost the same as those of Wabisha performed in the 20th century. The venue of Wabisha, the Somroji as defined and established by Rikyu in the latter half of the 16th century is still being employed in the Chinoy performed in the 20th century. As indicated before, Wabisha seems to be devised as a ritual of communion between the host and the guest through the act of the host offering food and tea to the guest and the act of the guest, in concert with the host's act, eating food and drinking tea in a small tea room of a humble hut made of rough wood and bark with a small garden, all of which are designed to call up a rude, shabby hut and nature found in the forest or in the wilderness. This ritual, which makes it possible to establish a close relationship between the host and the guest, is construed to represent the aesthetic as well as ethical values of ancient society, unconsciously reminding people of the primordial experiences of the milestones of human history. The concepts of guest, blood, and food have been found to constitute the basis of the ethical structure of the kanon, representing the primordial events throughout the history of humanity, which evoke symbolic thoughts with religious acumen among humans. Yamamoto 2008, 230 to 259. When we posit the ethical concepts of the kanan such as guest and food with the aesthetic value of wabisha, we cannot help but notice the structural similarity between the two. It has been found in many societies since ancient times that the guest was deemed to be a kind of god or a messenger of god so that he was accepted by the host warmly, offered meal and shelter for the night, Yomamoto 2008, 230 to 259. The Kanan explicitly dictates that hospitality is a sacred duty of the host, saying, the house of the Albanian belongs to God and the guest. The guest must be honored with bread and salt and the heart. The guest is given the place of honor. The guest occupies the place of honor at the table, and is thereupon under the protection of the house, Jess of 1989, 132-142. We have two pieces of evidence which concretely show the presence of the culture of hospitality in ancient Japan, the first is the ritual called Daijosai, great food offering ritual, and the other is the architectural style of Izumo Shrine, Yamamoto 2008, 383-394. The ritual, Daijosai, having been performed by the emperor since ancient times, and the structure of the oldest Shinto shrine, the Izumo Shrine, suggest that the concepts of, guest, and food have been fundamental in the Japanese civilization since ancient times. Yomamoto 2008, 230 to 259. Yomamoto 2008, 383 to 394. In this context, the aesthetic value of wabisha may be construed to represent the ethical concepts of ancient Japan, such as guest, food, and hospitality. Throughout the history of humanity. It is safely assumed that humanity had begun its existence on this planet from a state of being shabby, being hungry, being lonely, and being meager. If the humans of the primordial societies had no cultural apparatuses which enabled them to enact a friendly relationship between people of different origins or different backgrounds, they had not succeeded in creating a society with peace and order based on humanity and culture on this planet. The concepts of guest, food, and the tradition of hospitality seem to be universally found in societies without state power such as ancient societies, primitive societies, and tribal societies, Yomamoto 2008, 383-394, Yomamoto 2011, 215-233, which may represent the primordial form of human society. I think that when humans had acquired the cultural apparatuses of guest and food, communication and information exchange became explosively waxed through their intimate contacts, ushering in civilization and the resultant prosperity. It is clear that only humans had had cultural apparatuses such as guest and food, leading them to have the ethical structure of the kanon, which had the potential to engender a sense of justice and the resultant social order, as no other animals seem to have ethics and order on the basis of cultural existence. Here, 
I assume that when humans acquired the cultural apparatuses of guest and food for the first time, which enabled them to have a friendly relationship between people who may be potential enemies each other in a society without state power. The incessant process of humanity's movement toward culture and civilization commenced, eventually resulting in the abundance of resources and the excess of materials. However, it is equivocal whether or not such the abundance of resources and excess of materials have brought happiness and peace to humans' minds. It is not rare for humans to experience the desire for more resources and materials even when they have already had enough. This idolatry of the resources and materials seems to go at people of modern times to plunder the nature of the earth, damaging its ecosystem and threatening the very civilized existence of them on this planet. Wabisha has the power to repeatedly and endlessly remind us of the primordial human experiences of being shabby, being hungry, being lonely and being meager through its unique style and form, potentially evoking a mindset of people living in the wilderness in ancient times. In contrast to the mindset of appreciating voluptuousness, extravagance and abundance which seems prevalent in modern times, the aesthetic as well as ethical values of Wabisha, appreciating the value of being simple, being austere, being serene, being modest and being humble, may be posited as the antidote to the mindset of modern times. It would be an alternative beacon for the future of humans, potentially alleviating the strain on the earth afflicted by the boundless cravings of humans. This discourse will not consummate unless the questions of why and how the aesthetic and ethical values of Wabisha have been perceived and formulated in Japan are discussed. Three cultural rationales should be postulated to have affected tea masters such as Maota Juko, Takino Joo, and Sen Rikyu, enabling them to discern the aesthetic value of Wabi and formulate it as Wabisha with ethical implications. Maota Juko was said to have been a Buddhist priest at a temple in Nara. Takino Joo, who was first thought to have been a priest of Buddhism as well, Yamanu. Sojiki 89-121 was reported to have said that the principle of Chinoyu should be found in Zen Buddhism and that the taste of Chinoyu was the same as that of Zen Buddhism, Yamanu Sojiki 9-16. Rikyu used to say that the essence of Wabisha should exemplify a world of purity which Buddha had preached, Nambaroku 264-278. Thus, it is clear that Buddhism was one of the rationales which precipitated the formation of the values of Wabisha. According to the view of Buddhism, Human existence is one which is fast entangled with desire, lust, and craving which are concerned with one's body, and the law which is concerned with feeling, with perception, activities and consciousness. In order to achieve the destruction of craving, which is nirvana, man must scatter his body, feeling, perception, activities, and consciousness, break them up, knock them down, cease to play with them through following eightfold path, right view, right aim, right speech, right action, right living, right effort, right mindfulness and right contemplation. Right contemplation, which consists of the four musings, was the most important ascetic, religious practice for Gautama in order to attain Nirvana, Yamamoto 2011, 215-233. Apparently, the gist of Gautama's teachings regarding how to achieve the destruction of craving points to the direction of lessening one's ego and, if possible, erasing ego which was deemed the fountain of cravings, that is, to the direction of being dim, being negative, and being nil. The mindset of appreciating the value of being dim, being negative, and being nil was supposed to be achieved through the religious practice of the four musings, which may be deemed tantamount to practicing Zen Buddhism. Thus, in the view of Buddhism, the direction of being dim, being negative, and being nil is to be bestowed with ethical implications, affirming this direction as good which would be a rationale to usher in Wabisha, which appreciates the value of being simple, being austere, being serene, being modest and being humble. As indicated before, Takino Joa was said to have been a Renga poet until the age of 30. He used to say that Chinoyu should comply with the aesthetic value of being cold and withered, which had been advocated in Renga by Shinkei. Waka and Renga seem to be the second rationale which precipitated the formation of the values of Wabisha. Renga is a form of Waka which is composed of a three-line unit of five, seven, and five syllables, and two seven-syllables lines. 
A long renga had the form of an extended sequence of alternating 575 and 7 to 7 units composed by multiple poets, such as the 100 stanza sequence of alternate 575 and 7 to 7 stanzas. In Sasamagoto, Shinke discussed the aesthetic aspect of renga, saying that the stanza of renga, which is composed following the forward stanza, should show a feeling, which is a bit different from the forward one. In this differentiation of feelings expressed in sequence stanzas, dealing with the charm of being cold and withered is more suitable and applicable for expressing the tiny differentiation of the feelings than dealing with the charm of being shining, Shinkei 1973, 63 to 160, as being cold. And withered can differentiate into the myriads of subtle charms and feelings, which may be difficult to achieve by dealing with the charm of being shining. Thus, the aesthetic value of Renga is liable to drift to appreciating the charm of being cold and withered, which would be a rationale to usher in Wabisha, which appreciates the value of being simple, being austere, being serene, being modest, and being humble. The third rationale seems to be the concept called Mujo, which had been cultivated by the Japanese since the Heian period, 7941185. Mujo is the Japanese word expressing a pathetic appreciation of the impermanent feature of nature as well as human life. As people in Japan had not experienced the attack, occupation, and destruction of their society from a political force outside of its boundaries since ancient times, such people who had been living in a rather static society were in a good position to keenly observe and apprehend the vicissitudinous feature of nature and human life. Shinkei emphasized that Renga should be composed while bearing this appreciation of the impermanent feature of human life in mind, revealing the doctrine that everything that is born must die and nothing remains unchanged, Shinkei 1973, 63-160. In the concept of Mujo, the connotation of the feelings such as sadness and emptiness associated with the ephemeral, transient and short life of humans can be seen. Renga should be tinged with the feelings of sadness and emptiness spontaneously engendered in the human mind, which realizes that the life is short and everything is impermanent in this world, Shinkei 1973, 63-160. In this context, it is not far-fetched to assume that these perceptions and feelings are apt to direct people to the mindset of not hesitating to depreciate the values of voluptuousness, extravagance and abundance as they look futile thereby fostering Wabisha, which appreciates the value of being simple, being austere, being serene, being modest, and being humble. As the Japanese had been directed to the mindset of appreciating the value of being dim, being negative, and being nil with a tinge of sadness and emptiness regarding human life since Buddhism had been accepted in Japan, it is beyond doubt that tea masters such as Maota Juko, Takino Jōō, and Sen Rikyu had been in the boundaries of those mindsets, when they launched to create Wabisha, which is quite different from the extravagance and ostentation of Toka and Daimyo Kanoyu. Maota Juko tried to introduce the value of Buddhism and the aesthetic value of being cold and withered into Chinoyu for the first time. It was further developed by Taki no Jōō, who explicitly found the aesthetic value of being cold and withered, which was prevalent in Waka and Renga, as the essence of Chinoyu. With introducing the concept of the Sonroji as the venue of Chinoyu, Rikyu combined the aesthetic value of being cold and withered with the value of Buddhism, establishing the form of Wabisha. The Sonroji is deemed to represent the ethical value system of the Kanam such as guest, food, and hospitality, which had been the Japanese tradition since ancient times as well. Rikyu's state as such a connoisseur and genius enabled the aesthetics and ethics to unite, resulting in the formation of a unique culture called Wabisha. When the aesthetics, Alethea, were coalesced with the ethics, Dyke, in Wabisha by Rikyu, it became a way to be pursued by humans as a nomo so that they would be able to abide on this planet peacefully and happily on an eternal basis, which is the ultimate aim of Rikyu. References 1. Iwanami, Shoten. 1941, Azuma Kagami 4. 2. Tanko, Shinsho, 1960, Chado Koten Zenshu 3. 3. Izai, 2000, Kisa Yojiki, Kadansha. 4. Jekov, Stefan, 1989, Kanyuni I Lik Dukagjinit, The Code of Lik Dukagjini, John Lacage Publishing. 5. Kaifuso, Ryunshu, 
Bunker Shurishu, Keikokushu, Honkareso, Nihan Koten Zenshu Kankakai, 1926. 6. Murai, Yosuhiko, The Development of Chinoyu, Before Rikyu, T in Japan, Essays on the History of Chinoyu, University of Hawaii Press, pp 3 32, 1989. 7. Nanbaroku, Tankosha, 1975. 8. Nihan Koki, Yoshikawa Kobunkan, 1978. 9. Okakura, Kakuzo, The Book of Tea, Tuttle Publishing, 1956. 10. Plutchow, Herbert, Rediscovering Riku, Global Oriental, 2003. 11. Rodriguez, Joao, This Island of Japan, Kadansha International, 1973. 12. Sen, Genshitsu, Sen, Soshitsu, Urasenk Chado Textbook, Tankosha, 2011. 13. Sen, Soshitsu 15, Reflections on Chinoyu and its History, T in Japan, Essays on the History of Chinoyu, University of Hawaii Press, pp 233-242, 1989. 14. Sen, Soshitsu 15, The Japanese Way of T, University of Hawaii Press, 1998. 15. Chinkei, Sasamagoto, Rengaronshu, Nogakironshu, Hironshu, Shogakukan, pp 63-160, 1973. 16. Taiheiki 3, Iwanami Shoten, 1962. 17. The Kojiki, Tuttle Publishing, 1982. 18. Yomamoto, Kozuhiko, Gotama, and Jesus Prophet the Concept Which Seems antithetical to the ethical structure of the Kanon, Seminari and the Combater per Guhen, Litter Signed He Culture and Skipte 30 Halves, 215, 233, 2011. 19. Yomamoto, Kozuhiko, The Ethical Structure of the Albanian Customary Law, Botomet Almera, 2008. 20. Yamanu Sojiki, Iwanami Shoten, 2006.